All right. We'll turn to your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter number 14. So I don't normally like doing this, but I was a last minute. Pastor Yant had texted me. Um, <clears throat> and he said, I might be getting sick. Could you have a backup ready? And then it was, you know, 7.30, 8 o'clock. Um, yeah, so I'm not doing so hot. And so I said, yep, no worries, I got you covered. And so I did a little praying and such, and I was swamped yesterday doing some traveling around and doing some work training that I didn't want to do, but I was supposed to get done that I still didn't get done. And so I went ahead and picked something that I haven't, haven't looked at or preached on in, in several years, but something that I kind of prayed about, something that we, uh, I think is a good reminder for us to talk about sometimes. And nothing super deep or super fancy this morning, but something that we can... Uh, get through in, you know, a, a half hour, 40, 40 minutes here. Um, and that's the subject of uh, Bible doctrine. You say, well, that's, it's on. So, because I didn't mute it. You broke it. It's all his fault. It's that bow tie. It's messing everything up this morning. <laughs> Anyhow, <clears throat> um, and, it, and you say, well, Pastor Kevin, that's a pretty big subject. It is. It's a very big subject. Bible doctrine is a very big subject, but we're not, we're not going to necessarily talk about the doctrine itself, but maybe um, kind, of, kind of our viewpoint of biblical doctrine. And uh, as you know today, um, I've actually got a good chance here in the last several weeks, couple of months, talking with one of my coworkers that's really interested just about kind of religion, which, you know, that's good, but obviously there's a lot of religions out there and then there's truth, Amen. And so, you know, for somebody that's just, just looking for knowledge, like the Greeks seek after knowledge, wanting to know about all these different kind of religions, that's, that, that's a knowledge base, right? They're not looking for a faith, they're just looking for kind of knowledge. Well, what, what do you think about this? So it's a good spot to actually talk with somebody about it and to talk to people about the Lord and about the Bible and what I believe and why I believe what I believe. Um, but it's hard when, when, when people see this as a religion or just something that, you know, makes us feel good every, every week. Right? Obviously, we know the truth. We have the truth. But there are billions of people in the world that have a bunch of different, thousands of different religions that all believe they have the truth just as much as we do. Right? And so, and there's a lot of people, and I dare say it, there's a lot of Baptists out there that believe they have the truth just as much as we do, and they don't agree. There's a lot of stuff that's Bible doctrine that some people see as easy and well, that's just what the Bible says. And there'll be some that are Baptist or Christian that see the same verse and believe something different based on it. Right? And so we'll get into a little bit of that. But 1 Corinthians chapter number 14, verse number 26, I'm just going to read it real quick. And like I said, a lot of this might, might spit kind of, you'll be, hey, you think he talked about this a while back. It's been a while. It's been like over five years. So it's been a while. But some of it might seem familiar. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 26, the Bible says, How is it then, brethren, when ye come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation, let all things be done unto edifying. Let's pray. Almighty Father, I thank you for this, uh, this day. I thank you, Lord, for helping us to be here this morning. I thank you for a few extra people showing up. Um, encouraging to have people here at Sunday School, um, even though there's a lot of things going on, a lot of vacations and a lot of illnesses going around. I pray just help us to have a, a good time this morning in Sunday School as we look into some, into some things about uh, the Word of God. Uh, and help those that are out today, uh, I think of Pastor Yant and a lot of other people as well, Lord, that are out with the flu and out with this uh, with a stomach bug and head colds and all sorts of junk. I pray you just please help get everybody healthy and back to church. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> So being a Baptist church, I think, we, I think we can safely say this morning that we know something about doctrine. Amen? Obviously, that's a staple part of what we believe. Doctrine. Uh, Baptists, out of all, are doctrine, 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 doctrine. Um, it's a word that we use almost every time we are in service, whether it be Sunday, Wednesday. I mean, I've used it in junior church, too. Doctrine is very important. Doctrine is what makes up our beliefs. It's the most important part of our beliefs. Uh, we, we believe in the doctrines of the Word of God. Right? That's where we get our doctrines from. Amen? Amen. amen. That should be an amen. The Word of God is the only place we get our doctrines from. Amen. Okay? And we all say amen, but a lot of us have things that we've read or things that we've seen or something that somebody special fancy said on YouTube or Facebook, and it's not necessarily what the Word of God says. And the reason why I say that is because have any of you noticed how complicated the doctrines of the Word of God are getting? Doesn't it just seem every time you're in a different church, it just gets complicated? It's hard to understand the Bible. 
It's just hard. And the more as time passes, good old-fashioned solid Baptist churches become like Catholic churches where the only person that seems to be able to understand the Word of God is the pastor or the person behind the pulpit. Because it's just hard to understand. No, it's not. It's the Word of God. It's the easiest book on the planet to understand. You don't want to know why? Because when you're saved and on your way to heaven, you have this cool thing inside you called the Holy Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit of God knows exactly what the Bible says because um, He's God. And God wrote it. Right? It's not hard to understand. But, it just seems that it's hard to understand because more and more people study the Bible today and the more and more they study it, the more and more complicated they make it. Right? You know, the Bible says, it tells us that there's nothing new under the sun. Well, as human beings, we don't like that. We like new and flashy stuff. So unfortunately, sometimes we make up new and flashy stuff. Uh, and it gets us in trouble. Okay? Uh, the Bible should become easier and easier to understand the more we study it, not vice versa. So why is this sometimes the case? Why is it the case? Well, especially, in, at least in my experience, and the things that I have believed incorrectly and have had to you know, eat some pride on, uh, is, is it comes down to one fact. People want to believe the doctrine of the Word of God. Okay, We don't have a lot of Baptists out there saying, well, I just don't want to believe the Bible. They do. They want to believe the Bible. They want to study the Bible. They want to know more about the Bible, about, more about the doctrines of the Word of God. But instead of just taking the Bible for what it says, they put their spin on it. right? And that can get us in trouble because the Word of God is inspired. Right? The Word of God is inspired. Okay? The KJV, obviously we know that's been translated. The original inspired Word of God was in the original Greek and Hebrew. Okay? We all understand that. I'm not going to get into that Bible, the KJV lesson. We're all solid on that. Okay? But the Bible means just what it says, just like the song. It means just what it says. Okay? No, no ifs, ands, buts about it. It's not super complicated. What it says is what it means. So, how do we avoid, how can we change getting into the trap? Well, number one, let's just look at doctrine. Not all the doctrines of the Word of God, but literally in itself, not, not, not even on a spiritual level, but just on a, uh, a, uh, just a, just a physical level, a normal level of what is doctrine, what does it mean, what is it? So some of these questions I might ask may not be rhetorical. If I give you a pause, that's not pause for effect. Maybe I'm looking for somebody to give an answer, and I'll promise not to you know, trap you like I did last time. Uh, but when we say doctrine, what do we mean? Uh, what does the Bible say about it? Okay, obviously, when everything comes down to it, we want to know what the Word of God says about anything, right? When we do things in life, when we, we make decisions, with, say we're making decisions on who we're going to marry or what church we're going to join or what job we're going to take, we all want to know what the Bible tells us about that. You say, well, Pastor Kevin, the Bible tells you what job to take? No, but the Bible tells us that we are supposed to ask God about these things. Right? So it doesn't matter what we run into in life, this book has an answer for it. Okay? All right? And don't pull the, well, it doesn't say I can't do this card, or it doesn't say I can do this card. The Bible has an answer for everything. Sometimes you just have to think about it for more than three milliseconds to get the answer. Okay? Don't be lazy. I thought, I, myself, um, back when I, when, we, when I went through this, I'd always thought that doctrine was just something that, you know, the definition of it was something that I believed in. That's doctrine, right? Something that I believed in. Uh, and, and, so, and a little bit of a sense that is true, but doctrine just isn't one thing. It isn't just the Bible sitting on the shelf. Um, when you look up doctrine in the, in, in the Strong's, you get a very simple answer. Okay, now, and this is coming from doctrine that's in our text in 1 Corinthians 14 here. If you look up doctrine, it's, it's literally, it is one line on the Strong's Concordance, okay? And it literally means instruction, okay? Instruction, the act or matter of instruction, doctrine, have been taught. Doctrine is very, very simple. It is the Word of God instructing us in what it wants us to do what it wants us to believe in it is literally that simple it's just instruction it is something that is taught something that is learned when we say the doctrines of the word of god we are referring to the teachings of the bible that's that's just it's just that simple nothing complicated about it now are there a lot of teachings in the bible yes there is there's a lot of doctrine but the simple, simple definition of it is the doctrines of the Word of God are the teachings of the Bible. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is given by what? Inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. I won't talk on the last three because nobody likes any of those. Doctrine we're okay with. Reproof, eh, not so much. 
Okay? Profitable for doctrine. Scripture is the best doctrine you can get. If you look at that verse, it is profitable for doctrine. In other words, God is only expecting us to use this for our doctrine. Because everything else is unprofitable. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of life. Okay? This is where God wants us to get the doctrine from. It is the best doctrine we can get. And thank God in heaven, Scripture tends to be quite simple. Okay? The Bible says what it says, and that is that. Anything different than what the Bible says is simply not the doctrine of the Word of God. Amen. Or you could use a word like false, or lies, or apostate. That's a scary word, right? Nobody likes that. Okay? As Christians, we should want to follow nothing other than the doctrines, the teachings, the instructions of the Word of God. And you notice I said as Christians, not as Baptists, okay? As Christians, as followers of Christ, there is nothing more on this planet than we should want to do than follow Christ. You want Him? He's right here in written form. Okay? Teaching these doctrines is a great privilege and but a tremendous responsibility for those that do teach and preach as we are getting the privilege to step behind this pulpit but are also trusted to be preaching sound doctrine. Okay? And I've been up here a couple times. Uh, thankfully, I can count on one hand. A couple times where I've had to preach something and then, or not had to, but I preached something and then a week later or so I had to get up and be like, hey, you know that thing I said last Sunday? Oh, did some more studying and... Uh, oh, I was not right. Okay, I was wrong, right? I've had to do that a couple times. And I'm telling you guys, it is not fun. When you're out there and you're just talking to your buddies, you're like, ah, yeah, you're right. That's one thing. But when you have to do it behind the pulpit and realize that something that you preached, that God trusted you to preach, you preached wrong or you taught wrong, oh, it is not fun. But at the end of the day, our goal should be to teach and preach and to listen and understand sound doctrine. Okay? If, the, if those that are teaching and preaching it are mistaken, well, then they need to step up to it. You know? But at the same time, we have responsibility as those that are hearing it and listening to it to interpret the Word of God correctly and to believe it correctly instead of taking a little bit what the preacher says or a little bit what the Bible says and a little bit of what we think about it. Right? That'll get us in trouble. Okay? What do I always say? And I say this more than anybody. I know it probably just gets boring. But what I say is there is... There are many applications in Scripture. There is only one interpretation of Scripture. There is not two. There is not three. There is not four. Well, I interpret that a little differently. Okay, then either you're wrong or you're wrong. There's only one interpretation of the Word of God. Okay? And when it comes to stuff that nobody really understands, it, well, what does this mean? And, does this, and then you're going to argue about this particular word and what that means. Just guys, don't split hairs over that. Okay? We don't need to split hairs over, well, the the here means this, but the the there means this. Yeah, that's cool. My dad's really good at breaking those down, but even he will get up behind the pulpit and say, look, don't split hairs over this. All right? You want to split hairs over something? Make sure you got the doctrine of salvation right. Amen. Maybe doctrine of baptism, right? Maybe doctrine of you know, what Bible we're supposed to be using, KGB 1611. Okay? Different things like that, that's stuff that we need to make sure we have right. Not what the the there means and the the over there means and what a there means or what is means there, okay? That's all how we understand Scripture better. But at the end of the day, there are stuff, if we can understand this morning, there are things in the Bible that aren't necessarily doctrine that we will literally split churches over. All right, what do we say? Don't argue over the color of the carpet, okay? Who cares? All right? Well, my Bible has maps in it and yours doesn't. Big whoop. It's not doctrine, okay? We need to make sure we got doctrine right. The other stuff, there's are, there are, and I'll be honest, and we all know this, there are things in the Bible that God puts in there. I seriously think it's because of his sense of humor. He put it in there and goes, these guys are never going to understand that until they die and go to heaven. <laughs> seriously. You read, if you've read through this book more than zero times, or even read some of it, you'll read it and go, huh. God, God's got a little sense of humor, I think, right? Okay, or read the, the story of Jonah, something like that. You know, you read this and you go, I, I just, and he's sitting up there going, man, look at these guys all arguing over this little simple thing that I put in there. Man, this is awesome, 
right? And then we're not going to understand it until we finally get to heaven someday and go, hey, God, what do you mean here? Well, it took you long enough. It only took you 85 years, and now you're croaked, and now you're here. I'll tell you what it means. Finally. Okay? There's stuff in the Bible like that. Okay? We've got to understand that th- there, there are things like that. We can enjoy trying to understand it and trying to maybe get a little back and forth debating or bantery. Well, I just, I mean, this passage over here comes over to here, comes over to here. That's the cool part about the Word of God. But it's also the cool part is there are many different applications. I can read the same verse as Brother Daniel, and he could get something 180 degrees different from it than I can that applies to his life different than mine. But at the same time, when we come down to the end of the verse, we can both agree that the verse means this. That's two different applications, one interpretation. Make sense? Okay. Number two. So that's what doctrine is, right? Doctrine are just simply the teachings of the Word of God. Number two. Another second way we can avoid to get ourselves into trouble is sound doctrine. Titus 2, 1 says, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Sound here means healthy, uncorrupt, and whole. The only doctrine that meets the, that criteria is the Word of God. Okay? Okay? Nothing's changed. It comes back to the Word of God. There is nothing vain about the doctrines we find in the Word of God. Right? So whereas sound means uh, healthy, uncorrupt, and whole, vain means empty. Right? Vanity. Vanity, vanity, vanity. The only time you're going to find vanity in the Word of God is that Word itself. Because the Word of God is not vain. Amen? Okay? It is sound doctrine. There are a lot of teachings in this world that are as empty as a vacuum of space. That they sound good on a piece of paper, but they don't amount to a hill of beans. They're not worth anything. There's no value in them. The sad, sad side of that is there's a lot of people that believe it and believe it just as strongly as you and I believe the truth. It's sad that people are deceived, but the fact remains there's only one truth, right? There's only one, there's only one truth. There's only one Bible. There's only one God. Right, And I praise the Lord that we are able to get that right because of the Word of God and because of what He's done for us and the doctrines of the Word of God. But there's a lot of people in this world that don't believe that. Side note, it's up to us to give them the truth. Amen? So they do have the truth, but that's a different message. <clears throat> the downside is, like I said earlier in the introduction, there's a lot of good Christians today that have a lot of building blocks of their faith that are as empty as a Buddhist that are as empty as a Mormon, or that are as empty as a Hindu. You say, really? Good, absolutely. It's not much. I mean, they're probably right on the big things, but all the other stuff, the other doctrines, little things, they just, they got too much of what they want, what they believe, and a little bit of Kevin here, and a little bit of Kevin there, a little bit of this person, a little bit of that person, and we'll just kind of all wad it up like Plato in a ball with a little bit of the Bible, and, and that's our, that's our, that our, we'll put that little building block right there in our foundation. Right, and, and we can't do that. It gets us in trouble. Because the more and more we do that, the next thing you know when your foundation's built, 10, 25, 30% of it is all made up of stuff that's incorrect. Not good. Not good. Okay. <clears throat> we have to make sure that our doctrine, that the teachings are sound doctrine. What we believe is sound doctrine. And this is sound doctrine. But we need to make sure that we're believing it for what it says, not what Pastor Kevin says about what it says. Amen? Okay? <clears throat> Reminds me of my, my, my dad's message when we first moved here, his little bag of beliefs. Anybody remember that? Yeah. His bag of beliefs message, right? There's, everybody's got like one message they preach, right, that you can remember. For, for him, it's that bag of beliefs. For Pastor, I still remember that nude, rude dude. Anybody remember that message that he preached? Nude, rude dude. I remember that one too. That, it's just this... It's these weird things that you always remember. But that bag of beliefs, right? You've got to make sure that your bag of beliefs have the sound doctrines of the Word of God. Why is it so hard to find those that have nothing other than sound doctrine as part of their spiritual lives? Sometimes these simple doctrines are what people uh, uh, get wrong and what get people into the biggest argument, arguments. Um, there's not really a simple answer to that problem. It's not like you flip a light switch and, okay, all the, sound doc- all, all the doctrine I believe now sound. Uh, it's not Because, unfortunately, we have one major problem is we've got our flesh and we've got people involved, right? Uh, the Word of God has been inspired. The Word of God has te- been around since the beginning of time. It will be around well into eternity. Amen? Uh, it is that powerful. But, unfortunately, 
with the human element involved, what we believe doesn't always come out as 100% true because we, you know, we're not perfect. Amen? Okay? We're not perfect. Sometimes we have to set ourselves aside. The doctrine of the Word of God is perfect until we mess it up and make it to be what we want it to be. And then it becomes heresy. It's another word people don't like. The biggest problem with false doctrines today, and I'm not talking false doctrine on you know, the church that's down the street. I'm talking false doctrines in good, solid Baptist churches. Okay? The biggest problem with false doctrines, even, and it's not major stuff. All right, If you go to any solid Baptist church, they're not going to be wrong on you know, salvation. They're not going to be wrong on baptism. All that. They might be wrong on you know, Lord's Supper, but that's another story. Um, they're going to be right on the solid doctrines, right? And that's why we can go on vacation and go to a good solid church and still get preached the Word of God. That's, the amaz- that's just the amazingness of the Word of God and the, each individual local in the New Testament church. But the biggest problem with some of these false doctrines is people. Because we think, and, and, it, and maybe you guys are all perfect and you never had this problem, but sometimes we sit in our chair at home behind our desk Sometimes even when we're studying the Word of God, and we just think sometimes we know just a little bit better than God about what the Bible says here. Right? I'm just the only person, I guess, that's ever, ever thought that. That's good. You guys are all more spiritual than I am. But we just sometimes, and you're just like, well, it's not the ma-, and you're usually right. It's not the major doctrines, but you know what? Salvation and baptism aren't the only doctrines of the Word of God. There's a few more than that. Okay? Even the devils believe and tremble. Even they believe some of the doctrine, <laughs> right? They believe there is a God because they tremble. Okay? We need to be a little more solid than that. But the problem is, is when we study the Word of God and we read the Word of God and we get to our spiritual time and we sometimes don't like exactly what it says. So instead of changing ourselves to match what it says, we change it to match ourselves. That is when it is your doctrine and no longer the Bible's doctrine. Okay? That's when the sound doctrine goes to the side and disappears. I am of sound mind, but my doctrines that I can just invent out of cloud nine are not sound. Sound doctrine is only found between the covers of this book right here. Okay? Sound doctrine. Another thing I like saying, how many of you guys have heard me say this before? Major on the major, minor on the minors, right? Okay. If a church, I've seen this happen. If a church splits because of major doctrine, because half the church believes you can be saved by works, and the other half believes you're only saved by grace through, uh, through Jesus Christ, well, that's a, probably a, that, that's a doctrine that's going to split a church, and that's, that's because one is right and one is wrong. The color of carpet should not be a reason why a church splits. And I'm, it, it sounds stupid, but it has been a reason for church splitting. Okay? Because half the church doesn't like blue pews, and the other half doesn't like red pews, and they can't get over their pride to realize that the only thing that matters is their butt sitting in it. Amen. That's literally it. You say, well, nothing ever happened. Do you know how many people did not like the fact that we got blue chairs a decade ago? There's a lot of people that came to pass blue, really? Now, obviously, they didn't leave the church over it, okay? We've got, our people here are better than that, okay? But it's stupid little stuff like that. I, I kid you not, you guys may not, every service, pastors have to deal with that. Little stuff like that. And if we as human beings let our pride get in the way, people will leave churches over stupid stuff like that. That's not even doctrine. People in the Bible stood for eight hours to hear preaching. You got a blue chair to sit in. Be happy. Okay? All right? You have a toilet. You don't have a pit out in the yard. Be happy. These things should not be stuff that splits churches, but folks, it is so stupid. It does. All the time. Major on the majors. Minor on the minors. Okay? All right? Now, I believe 
of all my being, all right, in a pre-trib. Amen? Amen? Okay? That's what the Bible says. I think it's very clear. I have been to churches. I have faithfully been to churches with good people that believe in a mid-trib or a post-trib. That's okay. Minor on the minors. If you want to sit here under the wrath of God for seven years, be my guest. I'll be gone. Okay? Major on the, are we getting what I'm trying to say here? Major on the major, minor on the minors. Salvation, baptism, music, dress, uh, the role of the father in the home, the role of the pastor, the role of the deacons. Those are majors. Okay? All right? The fact that you want, your wife wants to get blonde hair instead of red hair, that's not a major. That, that, no, who cares? Okay? All right? The fact that I told my wife June 1st I'm going to shave my head was a minor until a couple weeks ago. I became a major. Okay? <laughs> Plans change. All right? Let's not get caught up on just stupid stuff. Okay? That aren't even doctrine. A lot of stuff that we, well, this is doctrine. No, it's not. You're just trying to make a big deal out of nothing. It's in the Bible. Hey, I'll, it's in the Bible. I'll admit. Okay, cool. That's awesome. It's in the Bible. But you know what? If it's not a major doctrine, it's just something that you know that's in there that I think the Lord puts in there for us to just study and to marinate over. Great. Don't split hairs over it. Okay? Sound doctrine. If we could just all get over ourselves and agree on the teachings in the Bible, we would never have to debate about anything. Because we'd all agree. And you know me, and, and this is one place that I know a lot of people disagree with me. I don't debate with people. I, I've been cornered by people and like, well, what do you think about this? I'm like, look, the Bible says this. Well, what do you think about it? Well, the Bible says this. Well, what do you think about it? Well, the Bible says this. And they get mad because then they don't get, you know why? Because, especially for men, debating, yeah. It, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not, we do need some healthy debating, okay? And, but... I don't do it because I know I, I had a horrendous time with pride and a critical nature, okay? Back before I was saved and a little bit after I was saved, okay? So I know that's my weakness. So if you want to come debate me, I will not debate you. I will say, here's what the Bible says in that verse, and then that, I'll literally shut up. It's like, if you're not willing to listen to Scripture, or if you want to come debate me, and you don't even, I've had people come try to debate me or argue about a, a point of the Bible, they didn't even have a verse, Go home. Study your Bible. If you believe what you believe and you don't have scripture for it, maybe Google it shouldn't be your form of scripture. Okay? Maybe you should just go read your Bible. Amen. Now, if you come to me and you have oodles of scripture and I have to go, I'm going to have to go home and study this because you may be right. That's good. That's healthy debating. But it's really not debating. Somebody was right and I was wrong. Okay? Like I said, if we all just put ourselves aside and believe what Scripture said, we wouldn't have a lot of debating. The only time we'd have debating is, you know, for the little stuff. Well, the the, the means this, and the the then means this, and the thou, and the ye, and the this, and the so, and the... Ye. That's what we would debate about. Have fun. Knock yourself out. I'm not going to waste my time. I don't think I'll be on this earth long, just because, I don't know. I got kids, and I don't know how long I'm going to last. I think they're going to kill me in my sleep. Okay? <laughs> So I don't have time to do stuff with that. I'll spend my time on more important things. Okay? Just major on the major, minor on the minors. Thing is, we would have to be 100% perfect for that to take place because we are humans after all. And we're just sinners saved by grace. We're always going to have disagreements. Just make sure your disagreements are on the minors, not on the majors. Okay? What we can't have is Christians that aren't willing to follow the doctrines of the Bible to the exact T because it doesn't quite match up what makes me feel good and benefits me. Men, women, boys, girls, put your pride aside. And I've had people argue with me on this too, and I've got scripture for it. There is no such thing is a good sense of pride. It's just not. Now, we use that word and we don't really mean what the word means. 
Because we'll use the words, I'm proud of my kids. Well, you're not really using it in the sense of what it actually means, okay? But even my kids in my house know pride is not a word we use. Because I, I've literally, I have spent weeks, I have studied every time, pride, proud, proudful is in the Bible. You know how many times it's used in a positive connotation? Zero. It's zero. Pride is not a good thing. And pride will get you in trouble. When we look at doctrines of the word of God, and pride gets in the way, the doctrine of the word of God isn't going to be what comes out. Set your pride aside. The Bible says what it says. If you don't like it, then it means you're probably wrong. That's the, uh, that's the good thing about the spirit, of the, the spirit of God, guys. Is if we read the Bible and we don't like what it says, then we're probably wrong. Because the Holy Spirit's going, hey, you're wrong. You need to believe this. You need to do this. You need to say this. Okay? When I read a verse in the Bible, I go, oh, I don't like that. I'm probably wrong. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's the Holy Spirit of God showing us what Scripture means. Amen. If without the Spirit of God, we're not going to understand what Scripture means. This is just gibberish to those without the, the Holy Spirit of God in them. It's a good thing. If you read through the Bible and you get convicted about something, or you read the Bible and you don't like something, it's a good thing. Just make sure that the pride is gone so you're willing to change to match doctrines of the Word of God. Ecclesiastes 1.9, the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Okay? Just because some cool guy on Facebook said it doesn't make it true. I made my wife delete Facebook because I was sick and tired of good people I knew putting garbage on their Facebook page. That was heresy. Heresy. Just junk. I'm like, I don't want to know that some of the people I know do this. So I literally, I had her delete Facebook. I haven't had Facebook in a decade. I just got sick and tired of it. It's like, I don't want to know. I just don't want to know. If they, if they believe that, great. But I don't want to see them putting that on for their 3,000 followers. Because there was stuff that came up that they're, like, literally, they're teaching everybody that they follow, that follows them heresy and hypocrisy. It's garbage. These are good Christian people that believe stuff because Google said it. They believe stuff because this pastor on Facebook said it. Well, it was a good message. Yeah, out of the NIV from a woman. It's not right. Well, God could use it. God can use scripture, not heresy. Now, same time, I know people that have gotten saved out of a Bible that's not KJV. That's the power of God, not the power of the NIV. Okay? My grandpa. He's never used the KJV. He's a saved man. That's the power of God's grace. Not the power of not scripture. Okay? Does that make sense? All right? Okay? I'm not trying to say, well, they, you can't get saved out of anybody. You, you have to do this. You have to be a Baptist to be saved. There's people that believe that too. They might not say it, but, right? Brother Derek's sitting there shaking his head. There are people that literally, may, they may not say it, but what they believe is you've got to be Baptist, otherwise you ain't Christian garbage. You know how many people are in heaven right now that have never been a Baptist and they're just up their streets of gold playing with Moses? Billions. Never been a Baptist in their life. That being said, we do need to come back to sound doctrine. That's the power of God's grace and the Holy Spirit of God using even something that's not 100% truth like a wrong translation or maybe a track that wasn't really correct but the one thing they had right was salvation by grace through faith truth's truth right okay now i'm not saying oh cool pastor kevin said it. we're all going to go get nivs might not end well okay <laughs> don't go do that all right we all know where the stance of this church is but when it comes to sound doctrine don't let your pride get in the way. Because then it turns into number three. It turns into our doctrine. A 
Ephesians 4.14 says that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, but the, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. The devil loves Christians who change what they believe every Sunday. He loves it. Because really, they change what they believe because they don't know what they believe. That's about the best soldier the devil can have when it comes to Christians, is a Christian who doesn't know what they believe. Don't be that person. You don't know what to believe? Read your Bible. That's what to believe. It's not hard. You got questions? Go talk to somebody that's maybe studied more than you have. But what you shouldn't do is if you've got questions, go on Google. Have you guys ever done that? Like Googled something from the Bible? And the stuff that pops up, you're like, whoa, where are they getting that? Like, I have to sit there, okay, KJV 1611 verses on, enter. And then I got to go down like 10 before I get a right answer. Okay? It's because Google ain't the Bible. The Bible's the Bible. Wow, some of that old English is hard to understand. You want to know something hard to understand? Try reading the original 1611. I've got one. That's interesting. V's aren't V's. You want, it just, it's very interesting. If you try to read the 1611, it's a little hard. But you want to know something cool? The same words that are italicized in the one that I have from here from 2000 and something, same words that are italicized in it. It's just spelled a little different. Sometimes it's hard to understand. Sometimes it isn't the easiest thing. Because you've got to put a little effort into it. Okay? The Bible is simple. But God didn't make the Bible so simple that we could literally just go read it and get everything we need to know. Why? Because study to show thyself approved. God wants us to dig a little bit. Because how many of us would have a passing grade in our senior year of high school if we didn't have to study a little bit? You've got to work at it. Everything in life, you've got to work at a little bit. Word of God isn't different. Sometimes we've got to work at it a little bit. But what's funny about it is you'll sit there and you'll study for weeks and weeks and weeks on a subject. And at the very end you'll go, I am a moron. This is so simple. Why did I waste three weeks for this? Right? I've done it. I've sat there and studied and studied and studied and studied and studied. And then it just pops and I go, yeah, laugh, laugh it up, Lord. I, I get it. No. But you know what? That's the awesomeness of the Word of God. Sometimes we need to study. Amen? Because then, it's not so much our doctrine, it's the doctrine. Okay? Number two on our doctrine. So number one, don't be deceived by some new doctrine just because it's fresh and on Facebook. Number two, be willing to change what you believe if you're proven wrong. With this, too many Christians will change what they believe because somebody on Facebook had a good point and there's no scripture reference anywhere. Say, nah. Deleted Facebook because of it. It amazes me how many people today in good, solid churches just don't use scripture. They assume that the person with doctor in front of their name knows more than them about the Bible, so they believe what he says. People, I got pastor in front of my name. Don't believe what I say. Believe what the Bible says. Amen. Just because I said it doesn't make it truth. The Bible makes it truth. If I'm wrong, I need to fix it. If you're wrong, you need to fix it. Not because Pastor Kevin said it, or Pastor House said it, or Pastor Sean, or Pastor uh, uh, Yant said it. But because the Word of God is truth, and if we don't match up to it, we need to change our doctrine. It's that simple. And you know what? Don't get embarrassed. We're human. We all make mistakes. We're all wrong about stuff. Suck your pride down and just say, all right, I'm going to believe what's right. If more people would be willing to do that, we'd be one big happy family. I'm telling you what. Number three, 
If you are right, because what you believe matches up to the Word of God, don't waver. Now, this is the hard part, because there's a lot of people that think what they believe matches up to the Word of God, and they won't waver. Don't be that person, because that's really an easy spot to be in. Number four, don't interpret the Word of God with a 21st century culture. This book was translated 400... And 13 years ago, don't try to interpret it with 21st century Google English. You will make mistakes. There's a reason why all the pastors use a strong concordance with English of the same era that the English of the Word of God was translated into. Gay in the Bible does not mean what gay means today. Talent in the Bible does not mean what talent means today. Okay? The ten talents is not God giving you talents to play the piano. It's God giving that guy money. Oh, sorry, that's a pet peeve of mine. I've heard pastors <laughs> preach that from the pulpit. Talents. Yes, see, God gave them talents. You've got to be good with the talents God has given you. That entire passage of Scripture is about God giving you money and to be good with the money He's given you. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's one area where it's like... That, but that's because pastors will preach the Bible according to what they know of the English language today. Okay? Don't interpret the Word of God with a 21st century culture. You will make mistakes. Next one. Avoid arguing about your doctrine. You said, well, debating was a good thing. Debating sometimes can be a good thing. Don't argue. Argue is never a good thing. Okay? If you sit down with a brother or sister in Christ and you're sitting there and you're talking about what each of you think about a passage of Scripture and it goes from a friendly conversation to an argument... Shut up. I'm not trying to be mean. Just be quiet. Because it goes from having a good, healthy conversation to arguing to bitterness and we're never going to talk again and we're going to have this, every time we walk into church, two people are going to be, and everybody's going to see it. Minors. Major on the majors. Minor on the minors. Make sure we have sound doctrine. If we don't know something, study the Word of God. Get some help. And don't believe somebody just because they have pastor in front of their name or doctor in front of their name or REV period in front of their name. Okay, Believe somebody because you know what they're preaching is right because you're looking in the Word of God and going, yep, preach it, preach it. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Okay? It's not... Hard to understand. Doctrine is a simple thing. But as time goes by, I'm seeing more and more of an issue of this. Because people have Instagram, I guess, is the big thing too. So it's like people make comments on there. It's like, great. I see more and more of this of good, solid churches. And we're not talking about just, you know, random churches. Good, solid Baptist churches where people are so deceived. Because none of them will just go read the Bible. And study the Bible. They believe what somebody said on Facebook or what somebody, the big thing is YouTube. Because you, everything's on YouTube, right? It's like, well, this guy doesn't preach from the KJV. And he's not really Baptist or even Christian. And, and he's, well, he's not really a guy either. But it was a good, pre, it was a good message. Really? The Word of God is where it starts and where it ends for our doctrine. If it ain't in there, get rid of it. If it's in there and it's not in your bag of beliefs, well, maybe get a little bigger bag and put it in there. And like my dad said, sometimes we need to take the bag of beliefs and <laughs> take it all out and put the good stuff back in and leave the junk out. Take our pride away and just keep it simple. Keep it simple. Believe sound doctrine because that's what the Word of God says, not as because somebody I know said this one time. Right? As time goes on, more and more false doctrines and more and more confusion is going to happen. We know it's coming. The Bible tells us. Stand on sound doctrine. If it's not sound, get rid of it. Almighty Father, I thank you for this time this morning. I pray as we get ready for main service, so you'd prepare our hearts, our minds, our ears to the preaching of the Word of God, as well as the afternoon service. Lord, I do, once again, Lord, forgive me for... Uh, not praying about this, I do thank you for those that have served this country, Lord, and the armed services, and many, many, many people who have laid down their lives for this country so that I have the awesome privilege to stand here in a building behind this pulpit with people. 
Lord, uh, we do thank you for them. I pray, Lord, as we continue this weekend, Lord, that you'd help us to remember that. Uh, help us to have a good remainder rest of your day in your house. And as we come together tomorrow, fellowshipping together as a church, help us to remember those that have, uh, that have died, Lord, for this country. And have a good time fellowshipping with one another. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.